Hey guys, how's it going? I'm Lewis Hardigan Best and welcome back to my channel. And in today's video, I'm going to be analysing AstraZeneca stock. I'm going to be using fundamental analysis to see if the company is worth buying or not. I'll be then using a DC valuation to determine the fair value of their stock. Let's get straight into it. So, who are AstraZeneca? So AstraZeneca PLC is a British-Swedish multinational pharmaceutical and biotechnology company with its headquarters at the Cambridge campus in Cambridge, England. It has a portfolio of products for major diseases in areas including oncology, cardiovascular, I'm not even going to pronounce them, infections, neuroscience, you get it, they make drugs for all sorts of different things and it was involved in making one of the COVID-19 vaccines. The company was formed in 1999 through a merger of the Swedish Astra and the British Zeneca, hence AstraZeneca. So the company has a primary listing on the London Stock Exchange and is a constituent of the FTSE 100 index. It also has listings on the Nasdaq, um, Stockholm, Nasdaq New York and the Bombay Stock Exchange and the National Stock Exchange of India. Now let's have a look at the sales for AstraZeneca and we'll start with the sales per business and Oncology makes up the vast majority of sales with 39%. Cardiovascular, renal and metabolism makes up 26%, respiratory makes up 19% and the rest make up, what's that, 9% and 2.6%, um, yeah, not pretty trivial really, so just a rest for drugs we do. Sales per region, so very, very vast, a lot of countries they sell to, so 33% for the United States, 19% um, to China, 9% um, to Japan and then you can see all those other countries pause and have a quick look. Um, but yeah, they, they sell, sell worldwide basically. Now onto the income statement and all of this data has been taken from macro trends and it is all in US dollars. Um, so yeah, from 2020 to 2016, the revenue is up about three, over $3 billion, like $3.6 billion, so pretty decent stuff. I've been looking at the net income figure. Unfortunately, this has been down in the past five years. So yeah wonder why that is um, and especially last year they had a bit of a poor year profit wise um, you want to see this continue to go up hopefully the vaccines will help boost their profit over the coming years now onto the balance sheet and the two figures to look at from here and um, the standout figures of a long-term debt so yes this is up um, about three billion dollars over the past five years so not a good sign and um, yeah just not a good sign really what can i say apart from that and um, returned earnings as well um, Yes, they were down actually in the past five years. Very surprising stuff. Um, yeah, that, that's not too good really, is it? Um, long term debt up, return earnings down. I wonder if they kept paying the dividend. Um, I can't remember from the top of my head if they cancelled it or not, so we'll see in the next section. Now onto the cash flow statement, and let's start with cash flow from operating activities and net change in PPE. Um, quick, quick maths in my head. Um, yeah, 2020 to 2016, free cash flow is up, so that's a good sign, of course. Um, good stuff. Um, net long-term debt. Um, yeah, as we saw, they issued the debt. Um, shares repurchased and dividends paid, the next one. So, yeah, looks like we continue paying the dividend, even though they were issuing debt. Um, so, interesting one. Um, something I don't really like. I like a company to make enough profits in the year that they can cover the... The dividends with or oh, free cash flow is a better number to use but yeah i don't like companies paying dividends when they've made a loss in the year i just think it's dumb so yeah not a fan of that but yeah a consistent dividend payer for you income investors now onto the key financial ratios and start with the current ratio um just below one so not great but you want it to be above one over time long-term debt to capital so they are over the 50 percent threshold i usually like to look at um it has increased over the past few years as well um, gross margin very solid pharmaceutical companies are very very profitable one reason I do like them for sure um, net profit margin though it is a bit poor really compared to, to some of its peers such as Pfizer um, yeah for net margins are fantastic and um, for pharma companies you want them in the high 20% really um, in my opinion but then having a look at return on equity it's showing fairly solid Apart from the past two years, it's been a bit dire. So, yeah, a little bit inconsistent. Um, but if it stays in the 20% range, it, that's a good figure for sure. 
Now onto the genuine impact stats, and we'll start with the quality metric, um, yeah, it's showing high quality based on its profitability, um, capital allocation, but the financial strength is showing is weak. Um, I wonder why that is the case, interesting. Um, value wise, medium, so it's bit come see come sa, bit in the middle, income statement, medium, balance sheet expensive and cash flow, medium. Um, yeah, it, I think this kind of show, it must be telling us that there's a bit of debt in the business and that's why it's looking expensive on a balance sheet basis and weak on a financial strength basis. But when looking at the growth metrics, it's all high or very high, um, likely to do with the pandemic, um, you know, COVID, COVID sales and all that good stuff. So um, yeah, interesting stuff there. Right, so let's have a look at the analysis checklist for AstraZeneca and yeah, so the company's listed in London, um, market cap, I think that's in US dollars, 180 billion, um, so I don't think it's that big in pounds, may, may be wrong, but yeah, the current price is at 89 pounds and 26 pence, P ratio of 95, wow, that's pretty mad, um, that'll be the most recent quarter's P ratio as well, so just to bear that in mind. Um, yeah, so let's go on to, the, on to my metrics. So uh, profitability rise, it passes all the boxes. Um, ha pretty profitable business. Uh, compared to its US counterparts, it might be lagging a bit. Um, but nevertheless, it passes on them. Return on equity average, um, above 15, solid. Um, pharma companies do usually have good return on equity. Um, the debt situation only just misses the, the green tick on this bit. Long-term debt to equity is above 50% and current ratio is just below one. Bit unlucky, but you know, strict cut-off rules, so it is in the red. Proven ability to grow, so revenue is up, but net income is down. Shareholder equity is down, but free cash flow is up. A little bit all over the board, um, but what's important for me is free cash flow is up over time. Earnings in the short run could be manipulated um, due to write-offs and you know one-time charges. So free cash flow is, in my opinion, a much better evaluation if a business is you know, growing or you know, becoming more profitable or not, free cash flow is a better figure in my opinion to look at. Great capital allocation, unfortunately we issued a long term debt um, last year, not good. Dividend growth ever so slightly, um, shares outstanding are up ever so slightly and good acquisitions. They've just made a massive, made a massive acquisition as well so um, looking to grow the business in that way. Time will tell if that is good or not. Acquisitions are usually not too good for businesses, but if they can add value and add internal return, it can be a good thing sometimes if they can get it right. But yeah, buy at a fair price, the ultimate pillar. Unfortunately, the peer ratio is 95, not good. Price free cash flow is 42, not good. Um, but yeah, the DCF spits out some interesting numbers. Um, for a 10% return, it's showing a share price of 65 pounds 80. So the, the stock would have to drop £26 for me to be even interested. But yeah, let's have a look at the DCF valuation to see how we got to them figures. Now onto the DCF valuation for AstraZeneca and the free cash flow figures are all from Market Screener using analyst estimates. All of these came in US dollars and I've converted and converted them to um, British pounds. Um, I've made this mistake before, I'm not converting. Uh, big big boo-boo. Um, but anyway, required rate of return of 10%. Um, showing a fair value of £66 uh, based on these free cash flow figures. So, yep, you'll be wondering, Lewis, why is the free cash flow increasing so much? Well, recently AstraZeneca acquired Alexion, um, and this was a $39 billion acquisition. Um, so, basically, the thought of some analysts is that the free cash flow is going to increase over the next few years because of this massive acquisition, hence why free cash flow figures have gone up. Discounted, um, it's all showing it's overvalued um, and it would need to decrease a bit. Over the past year though, it has been at this range, um, price range. Um, so yeah, who knows, weirder things have happened in the stock market. So what are my thoughts on AstraZeneca? So I think overall, it looks like a fairly decent business, nothing too major to note, um, maybe a little bit too much debt, um, especially with this you know, new acquisition, $39 billion getting added to that balance sheet may end up being a little bit too indebted for me to be interested. Um, profitable over time, um, pharmaceutical companies, high returns on equity as well, which is a major sticking point, which I like to see. Um, but yeah, AstraZeneca as a company isn't going, to go no, isn't going anywhere, is it? It's in all types of medical stuff, all types of drugs, vaccines, you know what. 
we're in it all, so we're a really big company and they're gonna be around for a good long time. Um, for income investors as well, have a nice consistent dividend. Um, I know some of you guys love your dividends, so if you like your dividends, this, this could be one for you. But I think for me, I think there's better pharmaceutical companies out there, which I've got my I've got on my radar. Um, be it Walgreens or be it Nova Nordstick. Um, I think there's better options potentially, more profitable businesses, less debt, um, better return on equity, better pipeline, you name it, there might be better options out there. But yeah, this is a brief overview of AstraZeneca anyway. I'm going through all the FTSE 100 companies, so I had to go through this one as well. I do know this is a popular stock for UK investors as well. Um, but yeah, as always, if you enjoyed today's video, please subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you next time. Thank you for watching. As always, it would be amazing if you could like, comment and subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed this video. I will see you in the next one. However, you can check out some of these videos.